Hello and welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. My name's Jason Webster. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today I thought we spent a little bit of time talking about some of the tillage programs that we implement here at the PTI Research Farm. It's probably one major question I get as growers come to visit us here at the PTI farm or we're out traveling doing grower meetings. Growers will ask us, what, what tillage program are you implementing mostly at the farm? And, and mostly we're a strip till program here at the farm, but I do like to use all of the major tillage programs. So we've got some side-by-side -side differences out here on the, on the farm and really showcasing some of the agronomic differences as well as the economic numbers between each of the major tillage programs. So let's go through the tillage programs that we're using here at the PTI farm. We're using no-till, vertical till, strip till, and conventional till as our major programs. Now I know there could be some deviations of these programs that farmers are utilizing on their own farms, but mainly I think these are the big ones that we're going to focus on uh, here today. So let's go through each one. Here's my conventional tillage. Some folks, you know, will come in and say, hey, let's make her black. And uh, that's what we're doing in this particular situation. This is a 4630 sunflower. I call it a disc ripper. We've got the disc gangs up front taking care of our, you know, working on residue management. Then we've got our shanks trying to get our lift and fracture to take care of soil density issues. And then on the back side, we've got our tines. We've got a rolling basket to make a really nice seed bed. Now, you know, we want to level, we want this leveled, we want to remove air pockets, and the whole idea with this is we're going to come in in the spring and we're going to do a one pass, and then we're able, you know, that's going to give us a really nice seed bed to plant right into. But that's our conventional tillage that we're using here at the farm. Then we transition to some reduced tillage programs. This is vertical till, again, another sunflower uh, tillage tool here giving us our vertical tillage. And this is a, a big trend in, in the industry. A lot of guys are using vertical tillage tools to handle residue management, and I think that's great. This can be a really nice program for that. Probably the thing we've gotten into a little bit of trouble with is if we try to do too much tillage with this. Guys will get a vertical tillage tool and they'll say, oh, let's make it black. Well, that's where we run into to issues. For true vertical tillage, we want the depth to be shallower than planting depth of the crop that we're going to put in. So for example, corn, if we plant two inches in depth, we, run, we want to run our vertical tillage shallower than two inches. And some folks just want to go a little deeper than that. And when we do that, we can run into some issues, especially with soil density issues. But nonetheless, this is our vertical tillage program um, here at the farm. We also have no-till, and this is where we're coming in with a burn down to control our weeds from the very beginning in the spring, and then we're just going to plant right into the residue, whether it's corn stalks or whether it's soybean stubble, but it's completely no-till other than the planter running in the field with those disc openers. Now, the most prevalent program we have at the PTI farm is strip till. I guess it's a happy medium between conventional till and, and no-till. We are banding, if you will, you know, making those strips of tillage and the thing I, I, I do like about strip till is, you know, I think we've had a really nice seed bed to plant into in the spring. But the thing that's kind of pushed me over the edge with strip till is the ability to do fertility banding. Now, in today's episode of Inside PTA, we're not going to talk about fertility here. We're just going to talk about tillage. But I'll tell you, this is one of the reasons strip till has been prevalent here at the PTI farm is because of the dual benefit of tillage and the fertility side of things. Okay. But I mean, look at the look at the, the picture on the screen here. You know, this is corn stalks. We're coming in strip tilling between the corn rows, and look at that beautiful seed bed that we we just planted into. There's no reason to bury all that residue into the soil to act as a carbon penalty. Um, we we can we can direct the seed bed between the rows and have a really nice environment setting setting ourselves up for high yield, no matter if this is corn or whether this is soybeans. Here's a close up. Look at that beautiful seed bed that we just planted into. Just gorgeous. And those old corn rows are there and that, that's fine. They're not going to bother us a bit, but a beautiful situation to plant into here. Again, I, I mentioned that we're just comparing tillage today, but you can see my Montag card here in the picture. You know, we're carrying DAP 18460 and Potash 0060 when we traditionally do this on the farm. So we can start with our first 
foundational pass of, of fertilizer. And this is gonna be in the bottom of the strip. We, we have a reallocation program where we know we're gonna, we're gonna be coming in with a planter with a liquid banded program again. And so we reduce the amount of dry fertilizer because we know we're putting on more fertilizer with the planter, but everything's banded and it's been a really nice program. One of the reasons we really like strip till in the fall. These are all fall applications. I, I, I do prefer fall strip till. It just works so much better. Usually in the spring, we're just so, so darn wet, it's hard to bring a shank in and do proper strip tilling. It can happen. In 2021, it was a beautiful year for it because we were so dry. But this year in, in 2022, definitely a year where we've been wet and it's very difficult to get those applications done and more importantly, done correctly without soil density challenges. Now, I guess I've been interested to know what everybody else is using. And so when we traveled the country this past um, January, February, March, during our 2022 PTI Winter Farm Tour, I surveyed growers. I said, hey, what are you guys using for tillage on your farm specifically for corn? 38% of growers said they're using conventional tillage. 17.5% using strip till. 16.5% using vertical tillage and 31.2% uh, implementing no-till. Now, take into, into mind here, the, 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 these survey answers were from across the country, from the Dakotas, Nebraska, Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, uh, lots of differences. Kentucky was, was part of it. So lots of challenges with different soil types, and that's why you're seeing all of these programs uh, being used. But, but it's interesting looking at, you know, conventional tillage being, being the largest one implemented for corn. Then, once I got these numbers, I said, okay, that, that's your corn tillage program. What about soybeans? Are you using the same tillage program for soybeans? And this is where it changed quite a bit. You know, we went from 38% conventional tillage on corn down to 19.5% on soybeans with conventional tillage. Only 5.6%. Uh, percent of the growers surveyed said they were using strip till and soybeans, which I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was so surprised. Again, I like putting that, that band of fertilizer underneath the soybean row, and it's, it's offered us some huge advantages. 36.8, that's kind of a big number for vertical till. Again, that's a big trend in the industry right now. And then the largest number for soybeans, which really is no surprise to me, is 38.1% of the growers using no-till. But, 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 Vast differences going from corn to soybeans in regard to what tillage program they're using. Let's look at the, the differences here at the PTI farm. I, one of the things I really like about the PTI farm is we're starting to generate some long-term data. We've been here since 2018. That means we've got four years of harvestable data. And, and things are starting to kind of set themselves apart a little bit. Tillage is one of them. In corn, we've seen strip till offer us the highest net returns. How does everything else compare? Conventional tillage within about $9.12 difference of strip till, real close. And again, let me go back on my, on my disclaimer on this. This is all numbers with just tillage factored into it. There's no fertilizer in the bands with strip till. It's just tillage, okay? So strip till came out on top, conventional till within about $9. Then no till comes in within about $17 of the acre. Vertical till was the lowest at $28.82 behind strip till. But again, that's over 2018 to 2021, so four years data there. Let's change gears and go to soybeans. This is where it did change a little bit. You know, now all of a sudden conventional till actually has the highest net returns, but I do think it's interesting to look at the others. No till within a nickel. So close, and I guess I look at the advantages of no-till in regard to long-term soil health, not doing that major tillage and being within a nickel of all that, you know, drastic, you know, aggressive tillage. You know, I, I would say that that would be a huge advantage for no-till. Uh, Strip-till, again, 33 cents is the, is the only difference compared to conventional. To me, I look at this and say, you know what, you give me the fertility side of things to add with the strip till here, this could be an explosion and be, give me a big benefit with strip till here. The one on the bottom is vertical till, but it's within $10, it's when, within $9.70 an acre. Again, if we treat it for residue, use it for residue management and not all out tillage, I think we're gonna be better off with that type 
of system. But those are the results economic-wise, side-by-side from the PTI form. So today's inside PTI agronomy tip of the day is, you know, I think most tillage programs can do an excellent job if growers manage them correctly. It's PTI farm, we found strip till and the ability to ban fertilizer has shown a, a dual benefit and provided excellent economic returns for us. Now, if you're a grower and you're gonna change your tillage program, maybe from conventional to reduced tillage in some fashion, there's probably some things you need to take into consideration. Number one is compaction. If, if you're gonna switch to a reduced tillage program and you've got some compaction issues out in the field, I think you probably need to address those, go in and attack them and try to try to fix them before you go into a reduced till program. Fertility, I think, is the same way. You know, if you go to reduced tillage, you're not mixing the soil, mixing that fertilizer into the soil profile. If you need to put a large amount of fertilizer on or you've got stratification going on within the soil profile, I think we need to fix that, remedy that before we go into that long-term reduced till program. pH is also one. I wanted to, I'll leave you with a little story today. When we acquired the PTI farm, the west side of our farm, right along the interstate, we soil tested the farm and we found an average soil pH of 4.9. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Tremendously acidic soil. So we needed to put limestone on. However, that's an area of the farm where I wanted to implement some of my reduced tillage, my no-till, my vertical till, things like that. But we had to put so much ag lime on to remedy the situation we were in with low pH, we had to wait a little bit. We needed to put that limestone on. I did want a more of an aggressive tillage program to, to work it through the soil profile. And then we shifted to our reduced tillage program. So just some, so just some things to, to think about in regard to tillage and what's going on with compaction, fertility, stratification, and pH. If you have any questions about anything we've talked about today, feel free to reach out to any Precision Planning Premier dealer or send me an email at insidepti at precisionplanning.com. We'd love to answer any questions that you have. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We will see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks so much for watching.